From Alphabetrium to Gazorp Gazorp, there's not a smarter man in the universe than Rick Sanchez. A scientist whose misadventures through the multiverse of Rick and Morty have ranged from the truly bizarre to the hilariously inane. The creator of countless advanced science fiction technologies and the perpetrator of numerous crimes across the galaxy, Rick has done it all. Hi, I'm Lydia from Screen Portal, and today we're going to be looking at the life and times of Rick C137, how he became one of the most dangerous beings in the universe, and the dark backstory that led to his life as an interdimensional traveller. This is the complete timeline of Rick Sanchez so far. Wubble up a dub dub! <laughs> Morty, <laughs> that's my catchphrase, remember? Rick's birth and early life. Rick's childhood is rarely touched on in Rick and Morty, but it's known that he's around 70 years old during the events of the show, meaning that he was born sometime in the late 1940s. By his pre-adolescence, Rick had already developed an intense interest in science, space, aliens, and mechanical tinkering. He was a curious child with a penchant for invention and a desire to see the universe. By his young adult life, this natural curiosity and ingenuity led Rick to a career as a scientist. At some undisclosed point during his early life, Rick met a woman named Diane. The two fell in love and eventually got married, later having a daughter who they named Beth. The small family lived happily together for a number of years. Until tragedy struck. The death of Rick's family. One day, while he was experimenting with teleportation technology in his garage, Rick C-137 was visited by another Rick from another reality. The visitor told Rick that he would soon create something far greater than mere teleportation, i.e. the iconic green portal gun that he would later use to traverse through the multiverse. The mysterious new Rick offered C-137 a chance to leave his home and travel, but he was rebuffed. Who do you think you are? A different kind of Rick, I guess. Rick told the visitor that he'd rather stay with his family, and so the other Rick left in a bit of a huff, and so C-137 told his wife that he was going to quit his scientific pursuits. But the mysterious Rick apparently took C-137's refusal personally, so later that day a portal opened up in the Sanchez's garage, releasing a bomb that killed Diane and Beth. Rick initially denied the truth of this memory when it was first discovered by the Galactic Federation brain -alyzer. but it was later revealed to be his true backstory. After spending an extended time grieving, Rick created his own portal gun and began searching the universe for the man who murdered his family. Rick's hunt for his wife and daughter's killer. Rick's interdimensional travels began with a singular goal in mind, exacting revenge on the man who ruined his life. He created an imprint of the specific Rick who killed his wife and daughter, and then went on a spree across the multiverse in search for him. Rick C-137 killed countless versions of himself, but he consistently failed to find the man actually responsible for all of his misery. But of course, Rick's early interdimensional travels weren't all gloom, bloom, and vengeance. In his off days, he made friends with Bird Person and Squanchy. Hey, Rick! Squanchy party, bro! Oh, Squanchy! Taken with their anti-establishment beliefs and penchant for consuming all manner of illicit substances, Rick joined the rebellion and battled valiantly against the Federation for some time. He even fought in the infamous Battle of Blood Ridge, which ended with a major victory on behalf of the Resistance. Unfortunately, it would also mark a turning point in Rick's worldview, and not for the better. After years of fruitless searching for revenge and seeing so many different realities up close, Rick started to lose his fire. As he told Bird Person at Blood Ridge, Rick was struggling to find any real meaning in his life, knowing that there were so many other worlds in which his actions meant absolutely nothing. 
and Rick C-137 began to grow closer and closer to the man he would become by the events of Rick and Morty Season 1. The Formation of the Council of Ricks Despite his loss of conviction, Rick C-137 continued to hunt down and kill other Ricks who might be his family's killer. His rampage eventually forced a united effort from the other Ricks of the multiverse, who sent coordinated attacks against him, all at no avail. As C-137 would later say, he was the Rickest Rick, and it seemed that no amount of brute force would sway him from his path of drunken violence. After realising that they couldn't simply beat C-137, the other Ricks made him an offer, make peace and help them create a unified home for the Ricks of the multiverse, a space station that would be called the Citadel. And guess what, C-137 agreed for reasons that haven't been fully revealed within the show. It's possible that the other Ricks promised to help him find his wife's killer, or maybe Rick just simply grew tired of killing himself over and over again. Either way, he relented to the peace offering, helping the other Ricks to construct the Citadel and the Central Finite Curve, a subset of all the infinite realities of the multiverse in which Rick was always the smartest person. Those two creations led to an era of Rick dominance across all dimensions, but C-137 didn't stick around to enjoy the spoils for himself. Rick's early adventures with Morty For most men, the creation of the Citadel would have been a crowning scientific achievement, but for Rick C-137, it was just another empty accomplishment in a long life of searching for meaning. He left the Citadel in his spaceship, and in a particularly bad fit of drunken grief, Rick journeyed to a new reality, one in which Diane and Beth hadn't died, but had simply been abandoned by their own Rick. He crashed his ship into Beth's garage, and after the fires were put out, he asked if he could stay. That chaotic return to a family that both was and wasn't his led Rick to the person who would slowly begin to change his life forever, his grandson Morty. After some time living with Beth, Jerry, Summer and Morty, Rick brought his grandson on the first of many sci-fi adventures. At the start, he was still an incredibly heavy drinker, and the first time he brought Morty into space, he even offered him a chance to nuke the planet and start the human race all over again with his crush Jessica. The two then embarked on a series of adventures collecting mega seeds, battling aliens, and engaging in various other science fiction parodies. Welcome to Anatomy Park! And it wasn't long, however, before things started to get bad, when Morty accidentally used a love potion created by Rick to turn the entire planet into David Cronenberg-inspired monstrosities. Oh my god, it's a living nightmare! How could you be so irresponsible, Rick? Bereft of any other choice, Rick and Morty used the portal gun to travel to an identical dimension where they both happened to die right around the same time. The two buried their alternate selves, Morty got a pep talk on the brutality of the cosmos, and they slipped into a life as it was before, with a new Jerry, Summer and Beth. Rick's new family life after the move to the new dimension with Morty, Rick began to slowly put down roots in his family life. Many of his comings and goings still involved mysterious and often baffling intergalactic affairs, such as selling weapons to notorious hitmen, throwing parties for tri-dimensional beings, and dating hive minds. While Rick showed glimpses of caring for his family during these adventures, they clearly had it become much more than a distraction from his gnawing emptiness. The scientist still struggled with substance abuse, and he even appeared willing to end his own life on a fair few occasions. Over time, however, Rick started to grow fonder of his family, especially Morty. Although he'd rarely acknowledge those feelings out loud. For instance, he risked his own life to save Morty's at the end of A Rickle in Time, revealing some hidden compassion. Be good, Morty. Be better than me. 
At the end of Rick and Morty season 2, while attending the wedding for his best friend and former comrade Burr Person, Rick's time battling against the Galactic Federation finally caught up with him. The whole ceremony turned out to be a ruse meant to trap the former rebels, and the Smith family was forced to flee for their lives. Rather than allow his family to live in exile, Rick voluntarily turned himself in to the Federation, in exchange for full pardons of Morty, Summer, Jerry and Beth. Though Rick later claimed he only turned himself in to take down the Federation, something he accomplished in spectacular fashion, it seemed pretty obvious that part of him also wanted to help the people he came to care for. Rick and Morty's adventures through the multiverse After dismantling the Galactic Federation form within their own prison, Rick returned home and resumed his usual interdimensional antics, only with a bit less drinking and a bit more displayed affection for his family. Well, except for Jerry. Still, Rick remained hesitant to truly engage with the relationships he denied needing, after going to bizarre lengths in order to avoid any real discussion on his feelings. Morty, I assure you, I would never find a way to get out of family therapy. And if things weren't complicated enough with his family, Rick made a clone of his daughter Beth so she can live two lives, one with her family and the other having adventures across the universe. However, Rick swaps the containers so he doesn't know which one is the clone and which one is the original. Rick started to lose the control he once had over his family, but he remained with them nonetheless, continuing to embark on various adventures with Morty and Summer. Through Rick and Morty Season 4, Rick went on a number of bizarre missions involving dragons, snakes, toilets and other strange events. He appeared to be exceedingly lonely during this time, with his repeated attempts at escapist adventures failing to shake him from the reality of his life. At the end of season 4, Rick was forced to fight a resurrected version of Bird Person. My name is Phoenix Person. No one's calling you that, dumb. Rick and Morty Season 5 was a period of soul searching in Rick's life. Yeah, there were plenty of his regular bizarre sci fi adventures, but the scientists seemed to lack some of the edge that defined him in the earlier years. After travelling into Bird Person's subconscious to restore him to his old self, Rick was given the opportunity to truly reflect on his choices, his past, and what he wanted his future to look like. After a spat with Morty, Rick finally understood that their relationship had been toxic and harmful. What we had was abusive, don't you see? I'm a bad partner because I never made you a true partner. Prompting him to set off on his own with his two crow companions, hoping to become a better person. I'll always be your grandpa, Morty. I'm just kind of obsessed with crows now. Rick was later brought back together with Morty in the season 5 finale, where the two of them had to work together once again to contend with evil Morty, an evil version of Morty he first encountered in season 1, who slowly propelled himself to becoming president of the Citadel. Rick's tragic backstory was laid bare before his grandson. He apologised for his previous treatment of Morty and they barely escaped as evil Morty destroyed the Citadel and escaped the central finite curve for good. Now that Rick seems to have come to terms with his less admirable qualities, he may be on the path towards redemption and dare I say it, happiness. He and Morty could finally find an equitable partnership to build on, leading to a future where Rick had more to look forward to than just another apocalypse party. Or maybe Rick C-137 will finally find the Rick who killed his family, giving him closure for a lifetime of searching. And so that ends the Rick Sanchez timeline. So far, Rick and Morty is a complex show, so there is no way I can squeeze everything into one video. But if you like the video, then I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.